Welcome back, my fellow calculus adventurers. Today we're gonna do a bunch of square root derivatives. Here are our four problems for today. Press pause if you wanna to try to do them all on your own. And let's go. So how do you take, just as a warm up, how do you take the derivative of just the square root of x? Well, I always like to rewrite and rewrite derivative problems in a derivative friendly form. So the way you're supposed to do this is using the power rule. So we need to rewrite the square root of x as a power of x, which is exactly the same thing as x to the 1 half. This ddx in front means I have not taken the derivative yet. I still need to take the derivative. I was just rewriting square root of x into x to the 1 half. And now I use the power rule. And that's where you bring down the 1 half out front. And it's x to the n minus 1. So the original exponent minus 1. So in front we have 1 half times x to the 1 half minus 1. That's negative 1 half when you do that subtraction. Okay, so if we have a plain old square root of x, you rewrite it with an exponent so you can use the power rule. What about some variance here? What if you have the derivative of two times the square root of x? Well, I would still rewrite this before taking the derivative until you've taken a million and a half square root of x's and it's just super easy. Um, just rewrite it into a derivative friendly form. So this is the same thing as two x to the one half since square root of x is x to the one half. And now the super duper important thing here is that if you have a number multiplied out front that is just a scalar, it's not no x's, no variables, and it's multiplying out front, it goes along for the ride. So two times, and then focus all of your attention on the derivative of the variable part. So that is bring the one half down, x to the negative one half. This part here is just gonna be the answer to this problem here that we did up here. And then we simplify a little bit because we have two times one half, x to the negative one half. So the two and the one half cancel and we end up with x to the negative one half. Okay, great. But what if we have this kind of number in front? How does this work? A square root of two times square root of x. Well, I would still rewrite the function first, but you only have to rewrite the part that has the variable. Don't worry about rewriting this part. This is just a number. So the number you just write the same way, and this is x to the 1 half. After you take that derivative, well remember, square root of two, it looks weird, but you don't have to do anything to it. It's a number that's multiplying out front. It has no variables. It just goes along for the ride. So just copy and paste that square root of two and focus all of your attention on taking the derivative of x to the 1 half. So same old, same old, bring the 1 half down using the power rule, x to the negative 1 half once you subtract one from the exponent. And if you want, you can multiply these numbers. These numbers together form the coefficient of your x to the negative 1 half. So you could multiply, treat that as a square root of 2 over 1. And if you prefer, you could write that as square root of 2 over 2 x to the negative 1 half. So it looks more like one cohesive coefficient there. And for a little bit of a challenge, how, you, how do you do this problem? Well, technically you could do this problem as a chain rule, but even if you haven't learned the chain rule yet, um, you can do this problem. And if you have learned the chain rule, I would actually recommend an easier way than the chain rule. And that's that there's a square root property that has nothing to do with calculus that just says if you have two things multiplied under a square root, that's the exact same thing as each of them having their own square root and being multiplied. So this is the same problem as this. And now we just have a number out front that has no variables multiplied by a square root of x. So there's no product rule, nothing special. We just, um, we can rewrite like we did before. It's gonna be very much like this third problem here. 
So we have the square root of seven is just a number out front, and you can view the square root of x as x to the one half. And now we take this guy's derivative. So the square root of x goes along, or the square root of seven goes along for the ride. It's just the scalar multiple out front. And then this part we take the derivative of, which at this point we've done four times. We bring the one half down out front, x to the negative one half. And this whole number out front is gonna become your coefficient of the x to the negative one half. So if you want, you can multiply these fractions straight across. You get square root of seven over two, x to the negative one half. Okay, great. If you want a tiny bit more practice, if you have to, how do you rewrite this not using negative exponents and using a square root and a denominator instead? Well, if you have to do that rewriting, then how you would do it, so I'm just copying and pasting the number out front, the negative exponent is the same thing as putting it in the denominator. So this is one over x to the one half. And then you can do one last rewriting of it, square root of seven over two, one over, x to the one half is square root of x. You can treat that as one over square root of x. If you wanna be really fancy, or if you're trying to match one of the answer choices that's given, and it doesn't quite match yet, you can treat this as a multiplication of fractions, multiply straight across. You could have the square root of seven over two root x. So these are all alternate forms of this answer here. It sort of depends on the context of the problem, what you would put as your final answer. But let me know what questions you have down below. I would love to do a video on whatever you want. So just let me know. I know this is a hard year, so give me some ideas.